people deluded i'm back again good morning good afternoon good evening and in some cases good night arsenal fans i know some of you are getting ants in your pants you're thinking where's the signings you know this time last year we had the players in we was living and laughing essentially and maybe even the year before that now apparently you know there's been some sort of latest news where moreno and california are concerned awesome and yokerez are still linked with us and arsenal's plans indirectly tying into how we see declan rice next season is going to impact our midfield plans and you know I think the James Banges, the Charles Watts and all of these pe sort of people have been speaking about a lot of other stuff Smith Rowe as well future is subject to speculation allegedly Fulham are preparing and in the process of preparing a second bid so if you give me two secs I'll share my screen we'll get straight into it people now as I said sharing my screen thank you very much right on time the Athletic have done a, po a, uh, a post people in relation to where Declan Rice is seen for club and country let me know you lot's thoughts because obviously as Arsenal fans in itself this is something that's subject to speculation and I must admit I'm conflicted I always say I want the best of both worlds for me obviously the way Declan Rice plays in that six role is more closely aligned with how Manchester City deploy Rodri you know Rodri is the best in his role the best in the business getting Ballon d'Or shouts you know he's an Arsenal villain and he seems to just be winning stuff but he contributes to the attack obviously goals and assists when Rodri does score his dramatic goals like against a couple against Arsenal sure in the Champions League final but you know he does he he contributes to attack in many ways you know again Declan Rice is not Rodri or Busquets but because Pep Guardiola Arteta is kind of from that school of thought, the La Masia, the Pep Guardiola sort of stuff, as well as everything, it's almost like he's one of the first attackers in the same way David Ryer is. So I'm a bit conflicted. I want Declan Rice to be able to play this eight role as he did, you know, because if you can lock down both roles and that makes you multifunctional, we've got the best of both worlds. If we need you to play as a six, you do the six thing. If you need you to do an eight, you do the eight thing and, and we progress from there. Um, and I'll also tie into one of the best of both worlds. I would love a reality where, you know, Know, kind of continuing the theme with you know assuming we get California on top of the defensive ranks I want to be spoiled for choice there could be a game where you need two sixes and a ten two eights and a ten just one six in Declan Rice holding and then you've got I don't know currently in the team Fabio Vieira or Smith Rowe and Odegaard as rotating eights just um, to the left and right of him I'm not sure you know Declan Rice's bread and butter is the number six row essentially people that's where he made 200 odd appearances for West Ham that's where he got capped by the country that's what led to him getting you know signed for 100 million of course, there's been times he's had to do the sixth thing. And uh, again, uh, obviously, Mikel Arteta is changing the way Declan Rice sees playing in a six or playing in an eight role, playing in a midfield role in general, people. But at the same time, one does wonder how much did Declan Rice, if anything, just devil's advocate, have to play in that eight role because there was a lot of, you know, injuries and changes and things of that ilk um, where our central midfield is concerned. So I'm a bit conflicted and I do think there's a correlation between Declan Rice playing in that, you know, ever so perfect Arsenal system, going into a, an England side where it's completely shambolic and he looks disillusioned. He's having to take too many touches. There's no options on top of obviously himself needing to do better. Um, so yeah, for club and country, it's quite the debate. And tell me your thoughts, people. Where do you see Declan Rice long-term? Scrolling down to the actual relevant part for us Arsenal fans here, people. One second. Okay, that was weird. Sorry, people. I just got an alert, but we keep going. When... Rice arrived at Arsenal, he and Arteta shared a vision of him playing at the base of midfield as a number six. So maybe that ties into what I was saying. Over the course of his first season, it became clear Arsenal functioned best with Rice in a more advanced role as a number eight. He was supported supported, sorry, by one of Jorginho or Partey, both excellent passes who can progress the ball from deep. Rice is a good passer, but not quite at the level of someone like Jorginho. That is no slight. I mean, that's no disrespect. You know, I don't think Declan Rice has the passing ability consistently to break line of a Jorginho, of a Thomas Partey. It's fact. Furthermore, asking Rice to play as a holding pivot inhibits his impact in other areas. And obviously, the fact that he's got a great engine helps Arsenal. When Rice, Rice went unshackled, is a force of nature. This is elite Reading. He's a pressing and ball-winning machine, a relentless runner, even contributed seven goals and eight assists in his first Arsenal season, which I'm sure is his best season in terms of output. It is not so much about offsetting Rice's weakness as it is about unleashing in the full gamut of his strengths there will be doubtless there will be doubtless 
there will doubtless be games or moments, maybe like I can't read, when Rice is asked to play as a number six. The arrival of an attacking-minded eight would, for example, change the dynamic. But if Arsenal continue to carry on with Kai Havertz as their central forward, when it seems inevitable, Rice will spend much of next season shuttling up and down the inside left channel. That will mean responsibility of build-up play being placed upon another holding midfield player. In May, Arsenal extended Jorginho's contract until 2025. Partey is another is under contract until the same date. At 32 and 31, respectively, neither is a long-term solution, as we know, people. Unlike the former England manager, Arteta at least has the luxury of being able to resolve this problem via the transfer market. I mean, careful, it's not like Gareth Southgate doesn't have the pick of players that are eligible for Arsenal, Liverpool, etc., etc., and he somehow chose to play Declan, uh, Declan Rice next to Trent Alexander-Arnold in midfield, bearing in mind no slight on, on Trent, but you've never done that before, called up Wharton for no reason, you know, really had a reluctance to call up Maino when he made his debut, much less start him and utilise him in this tournament. So it's self-inflicted errors, really. They have closely followed the likes of Jao Neves as well as Real Sociedad pair Mikel Moreno and Martin Zubimendi. Jao Neves apparently could be close to Paris Saint-Germain, very talented player, but where you're looking at 100 odd million quid, it's fair to say Arsenal, we're not in that conversation for him per se. You know, I know we signed Declan Rice. Martin Zubimendi, it seems like those links have gone quiet and Moreno for me would play on the left, so Declan Rice would go on the right. Moreno Reino might not be a sexy signing, but it could be a shrewd addition following the Jorginho and Trossard stuff, people. The current thinking is that a significant midfield arrival may require Partey to be sold if for a successive summer a buyer for the Ghanaian does not come forward. It may mean Arsenal entering the new season with two veterans vying for a supporting role alongside Rice. I hear that, people, but I still think we need a midfielder. You need someone that's, you know, if you, you get a Moreno and you have Declan Rice, you do what you need to do with Jorginho and Partey. I don't, I'm not really a fan of this. We, you know, we have to sell before we can bring one in. Everybody could see last season we needed a central midfielder. Partey gets injured, fair enough. He's a quality player. If you want to move him on, move him on. Jorginho's a quality player, you know, but Jorginho struggles when it's a when it's a NBA crazy Premier League game. You know, remember when Declan Rice came off in the North London derby? You know how open the midfield was. Again, the first half against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, where we had Zinchenko and Jorginho using issues and big up Jorginho. He's a great player, experienced. No disrespect to him, did he? thing but I genuinely believe Mikel Arteta had to use Jorginho a lot more than he wanted to because of the injury to Thomas Partey really and truly um so we'll have to see in, in relation to that so really it just the only thing we learned here is the fact that you know we like the likes of Moreno, Martin Zubamendi and Jao, and Jao Neves we haven't really learned anything from this article because these are talking points we we all say but between ourselves so let's move on and crack, crack on uh big up Ethan I'm wary and Miles Lewis Skelly I hope they travel to America as it says here we're flying out to the states on Sunday and due to the Copper America and Euros taking place in the summer it's opened the door for youngsters to be on the plane I wonder if Charlie Patton I would be on the plane purely because he's someone that you never know. I would love for him to make it at Arsenal, but someone that will probably move on away from the club. As we know, our under-21s have already been in action. They've played um, Enfield Town yesterday, actually, and they played somebody else um, before that as well. So it is what it is. We hope we always want to push youngsters through. And as you lot know, on the American tour, we'll be playing Bournemouth as well as Manchester United and Liverpool. Obviously, you know, with it being a Copper America and a Euro, certain players are coming back at certain stages. The next batch of players due back are those who went out in the group stage the Euro, such as Jorginho. What? So that's, yeah, Jorginho. And to be fair, I know he didn't go out in the group, if I can remember correctly, but uh, Trossard could surely be part of that. After that, Arsenal will welcome back players either eliminated in the last 16 in the quarterfinals of the Euro, such as Kai Havertz. Those players involved in the final in Aaron Ramsdale, Bakayo Saka, David Ryan, Declan Rice are not expected back until after the tour to the USA. Personally, I think you're going to see them really and truly. I, I you know, Declan Rice and, and, and Saka, especially Saka, I think you lot need to rest your legs. You played a lot of minutes. I think you lot more than physically need to be with your family and rest mentally. But I genuinely think they'll do that for a week or so and they'll link up in America and, and be part of preseason preparations to some degree. And obviously, I'm sure, you know, they're going to keep their fitness up. And I, I wouldn't say match fitness is really an issue per se, because again, where some players have had a holiday, a bulk of our players have been playing in the Euros. But with us 
versus last year, like we got signings in early, you know, there wasn't the European impact, players had a bit of rest. It does it does make me wonder what the climate will look like when we step into the 2024-25 season next month, really. So it'd be interesting to see exactly what's going on there. Arsenal are braced for fresh bids for Emil Smith Rowe after rejecting an offer from Fulham. There are some ITKs on Twitter saying that the second the first offer that Fulham placed wasn't too far away from what Arsenal want. And allegedly Smith Rowe has already spoken with Marco Silva. Crystal Palace are also interested in the midfielder and expected to make an official approach for him. Arsenal are open to selling Smith Rowe, who has linked up with the Gunners for the start of pre-season, but looks set to leave the Emirates Stadium this summer. He played only 346 minutes last term, people. And Fulham obviously got some money and we need to be leveraging that because they sold Xiao Paulinho from us and they took four points off us last season. So let's make sure we're doing things. Obviously, if Crystal Palace and Fulham are both linked with Smith Rowe, then that helps us because it drives up the price, if you're honest with yourselves, people. We'd love to see Smith run. Obviously, if you go to Crystal Palace, they've got a new, I can't remember the guy's name, but they've got a new exciting manager. Obviously, they've let, let Elise go, so there's an opportunity to be a creative spark there. You stay in London and, you know, forgive me if I'm wrong, but Smith Rowe is from South London, so it makes sense. I don't know how long you'd be playing with them, but there's Gurhi and Elise, uh, Eze, apologies there, and I'm sure they'll bring in some other quality players. And, you know, Crystal Palace is one of the worst away grounds to go to um, in the Premier League, so it's a big club to be moving to. So big him up. Obviously, we've already, you know, seen Lokonga and Tavares depart the club in some capacity. Partey, Tierney, and Ketia, Ramsdale, and Reese Nelson have all various degrees been linked with moves away people, and you know their futures will be subject to speculation. Nelson is still linked with West Ham. Eddie and Ketia is still linked with a bunch of Premier League clubs as well as Marseille. Tierney, there isn't really anything where that's concerned, but he is back in pre-season training, and one would imagine Ramsdale won't go through another season of being second fiddle to David Raya. Let me know your thoughts and don't forget to smash the like button. Uh, in relation to Moreno, every journalist is offering their own spin on things, people. Arsenal's interest in Spanish midfielder Mikel Moreno is an example of the Gunners' selective transfer strategy. Look at the glazing there, people. Um, we all know we signed Jorginho and Trossard and Moreno would kind of be of that ilk. Sources close to Arsenal expect a summer where the profile of new recruits is more akin to Jorginho and Trossard. So does that, does that mean shrewd cut price additions or does that mean experience? I don't really care how old the players are, just as long as they add something. Uh, Edu typically looks to recruit both, have proven to be shrewd additions, even if they arrived with little resale value. I mean, I hear the resale value and beyond the obvious, where you look at some of our young players, that's obviously a caveat, but... Are we investment bankers or are we footballers? Like the best investment they can do is making a positive impact on this football club and winning FA Cups, Premier Leagues, Champions Leagues, etc. etc. I know Arsenal fans don't want to hear this, but when Van Persie went to Man United, I don't think they were sitting there and saying, Oh, resale value. He helped win them the Premier League. That's resale value, creating memories, in my opinion. Uh in this, it is in it, there's a lot of tosh here, people. It is in this context of these veterans that Arsenal value Arsenal's interest. Sorry, uh, maybe I can't read. It is in the context of these veterans' values that Arsenal's interest in Mikel Moreno should be assessed. CBS Sports sources have confirmed that the Gunners are, are admirers of the Real Sociedad midfielder through his involvement in Spain's win at Euro 2024, means that has not crystallized into definitive contact between the two clubs. Now, some reports earlier said that you know we have indirectly spoken with Moreno. Arsenal kept a close eye on Labriel, former club of Martin Odegaard last season, so shit that if you don't know, and have held an interest in midfielder Martin Zubimendi and left winger Andrea Berenstey. I can't say his name, people, but yeah, man, that might be someone to do a tactical video on because it says we've been interested. We all know Moreno's in the last year of his deal, people. We all know we're trying to get, you know, Califor a Califori deal over the line, people. Uh, Bologna, however, are understood to be determined to hold out for as near to their asking price as possible before sanctioning the deal for the Italy international. Arsenal's best offer so far is understood to constitute around $43.7 million in guaranteed money. So, we well, have to see him. We'll get on to California in just a sec. We all know players have gone. We've gone over Emil Smith-Rowe. Nelson also favours a move away and apparently he's got interest from Crystal Palace, West Ham and Brighton. So it's going to be quite the summer, people. Moving on, Enketia is to join Arsenal's tour and then leave. I mean, he's contracted to, to the club. It's like any other job, you know. If you hand in your notice, you still got to work the difference, really. Apparently, Arsenal want 30 million plus for the striker. I mean, if you could get 30-odd million for Eddie Enketia, a similar fee for, for Smith-Rowe, get anything from 10 to 30 million for Reese Nelson, then the academy is paying off, really. 
and they all, you know, probably need to move on. Out of all of them, I'd love to keep Smith Rowe, but yeah, sell them, put some sell on clauses, keep it reinvest, and we keep it moving. Charles Watts has been speaking as well, people. Um, he's spoken about pre-season. He's spoken about Arsenal's interest in Sociedad. He's obviously spoken about the medical um, and confirmation due for Tommy Setford's move from Ajax. Um, there's, he's also said there's a good chance Arsenal make another bid for Wolves goalkeeper Dan Bentley. And he's obviously spoken with what we've discussed already with Emil Smith-Rowe. Uh, I think we've gone over this so good. I've got the article twice, people. So let's move that. Apparently, according to reports in Italy, Arsenal are waiting for an agreement between Bologna and Basel to sign California. As we know, bars will have a 50% sell-on clause. And apparently, you know, Bologna either want two options. Arsenal give us more money or they remove or, or work with us where that sell-on clause is concerned. And if I'm Basel, I'm saying, I'm turning off my phone. It's like, this is for you and Arsenal to deal with. Like, you agreed to this a year ago. You know, you knew California was a good player and you're an Italian-based club, so you knew what he was on. Probably didn't expect Bologna to have the season they had and not only that, but go off and perform for Italy. I'm saying, forget that. This is good business from us. Business is business. Forget all of that. Run me my money, really. You know, if I'm honest with you. Uh, Bologna want recognition for the players' development in 2023-24, but Basel haven't been in touch with them for the last five days, people, which obviously could have a knock-on effect. Apparently, Arsenal have matched Bologna's demands by offering €40 million Euros plus €5 million add-ons, but according to other sources, Bologna still hope to complete the deal for more. So the longer it goes on, Arsenal might have to entertain walking away from the deal. Um, you know, might but, but uh, Ricardo Calafuri might have to burn a couple of bridges and make it clear, listen, what's going on? Or this could just be typical negotiation tactics. Nobody knows people in that regard. Apparently, talks have slowed down as, as we look to sign in people. Talks have frozen for now. Again, it could be the calm before the storm. I wouldn't panic yet. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I wouldn't panic yet. Um, and it's more or less said the same thing apparently Kivio was also was also thrown into the mix but it didn't get anywhere uh we're still pushing for him people again at this point we're saying the same thing so we'll have we'll have to see if we do sign him for 50 million euros he'll become our joint eighth most expensive signing of all time alongside Thomas Partey what what well, Partey was 45 Benjamin White was 50 Declan Rice obviously 100 Kai Havart 65 8 fair enough but how much was Timber? Timber weren't that much. Gabriel weren't that much. Saliba weren't that much. Bro, we haven't really spent madness. And how can I forget about Nicolas Pepe as well? And to be fair, Lacazette might be there for 52 odd million. I'm getting sidetracked, people. But moving on with stuff, Jeremy Frimpong apparently wants to leave Leverkusen. He's been linked with Arsenal. Again, I'm not going to say no to the player if Arteta wants him, but you've got Tommy Asu, Benjamin White, and Timber that can all play right back. It doesn't make sense, really and truly. I like, in theory, how Frimpong is as a player. I don't rate him defensively. I think he's very good going forward. Um, if Arteta could, you know, train that up, why not? And technically, he'd count as homegrown coming through Manchester City system. I don't really buy Arsenal's interest in that. But for what it's worth, apparently, he has a release clause of 40 to 45 million euros people and Arsenal, Manchester United and Liverpool have all been linked with him essentially he's better going forward in fact he's probably better in a back three or even as attacking attacking kind of a, a winger slash fullback essentially people Arsenal and Chelsea are the only club standing for Victor Jokeres this summer after Napoli pulled out of the race to sign him now Apparently, PSG are moving ever closer to signing Osman. So, are Napoli really out of that? I don't know. Are Arsenal really prepared to put the fee down required potentially for your careers? You've seen as high to as high as eighty to hundred million, and as low as fifty to sixty million. So, it all depends in that regards. If I'm honest with you, I don't really buy this. It also says Atletico Madrid are interested in him, people, but they've moved away. Apparently, he has a hundred million euros release clause in his contract. Arsenal and Chelsea have no intention to pay such amount, but they would be over open to negotiate in a much smaller fee. Sporting are likely to lower their demands as they recognise it's impossible to sell for that fee. But when, then again, you know, when you, in your first season, scored 43 goals in 50 games, including 29 in the league, but hey, are Sporting going to be in a rush to, 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 to sell you, really? And you're going to want something stupid from, especially from the English clubs. Uh, again, that article said Atletico Madrid have walked away. Rudy Galletti has said Atletico Madrid are looking at him as well as Julian Alvarez to replace Morata people. So again... The window is hotting up. Charles Watson said, Arsenal are working hard to try and keep Cheeto Obi Martin at the club and remain in talks with his camp. As far as I'm aware, nothing aware, nothing has been decided yet. When it comes to his future, Arsenal do not want to lose him and they've made that clear during recent talks. I mean, I did say this was a space to watch and I did say it was in the balance, but what do I know? Hope he stays. Be prepared for him to go, people. So we'll have to see. 
A first professional contract is on the table for Obi Martin that could be signed the moment he turns 17, but he's not 17 until December, so Arsenal remain vulnerable to the in demand strike. And even before then, I mean, if Bayern Munich got a project for you, go do your thing. If Dortmund or any other club got a project for you, go do your thing. You'd imagine, you know, again, for Chido Obi Martin, he'd be playing as a main. I actually back him to be Arsenal's under 21 striker first choice next season, unless we bring someone in because the playing squad isn't the strongest at under 21's level. You'd imagine he'd be a key player if he does play for the under 18s. And again, when you get to the first team, on paper, there's a pathway, you know. Kai Havertz and Gabriel Jesus are good players, but are they prolific strikers, really? The issue now is, is if Arsenal do sign another striker, like if we did go and get Benjamin Sesko, who's 21, not that significantly older than him, but not much older than him, where's the pathway? I do think a part of it is agent mind games to get the best deal. But if I'm Chido Obi Martin, but I'm listening to everything really and truly, especially the Dortmund stuff, Um, if I'm honest with you. You know, do what you got to do to get to where you got to get to. Barcelona's financial situation makes it unlikely Nico, Nico Williams could move to them this summer, even though you've seen some reports saying that they're going to sign him. Further confirmation of the Tommy Setford deal getting ever closer. I did mention West Ham apparently are in talks with Declan, uh, Declan Rice, Reese Nelson. Again, we've gone over uh, Dan Bentley and Emil Smith Rowe. Uh, again, apparently he's spoken to Marco Silva Smith Rowe and he prefers a move to Fulham. Palace are in the picture as well. Apparently, Williams wants to play for Barca and is currently giving it priority. Barcelona are very confident our talks are ongoing to reach an agreement on personal terms. Chelsea are behind as they deal figures to be expensive people. Uh, and again, apparently, according to the Athletic, Arsenal and Chelsea remain very interested in signing Nico Williams. Uh, Goretzka was told by the club that he's allowed to leave this summer. However, the midfielder wants to stay. Goretzka knows from experience, like last year when he was a candidate for sale, that in the end, he'll always get his playing time. His contract runs until 2026. Is there any take? Is, uh, for you lot listening to the video for him people let me know as of now Joshua Kimmich wants to fulfill his contract at Bayern until 2025 uh, Dewey who is linked with PSG Spurs Arsenal Liverpool Manchester United and a bunch of others he'll decide which club he prefers to join Bayern Munich as well in the next few days it's not been decided yet PSG apparently sent a proposal and a pushing for talks Bayern's first bid was rejected apparently Bayern want Dewey and Javi Simmons very greedy stuff. Uh, PSG are advancing in talks with Victor Osimhen's camp as their interest is now getting concrete. He's keen on joining them. The key thing will be a fee. So have they received encouragement that now Napoli are going to drop their price tag? And maybe PSG are the only club interested in him. If that, you know, for the fees reported, I'm not too sure. Once again, Hansi Flick apparently likes Moreno a lot, people. Um, we've gone over that. It feels like I'm missing something out here, people. Um, here we go. If you allow me to copy and paste, never miss out anything. Arsenal have been linked with signing a former player, people, who I'm not really convinced on. I mean, I don't think he's bad, but apparently, according to Blind, we're interested in re-signing Borussia Dortmund, Dutch attacker Daniel Marlin. The 25-year-old allegedly is considering his future and he's open to a challenge away from Germany. He has previously said he'd be open to moving to Arsenal. He could be prepared. We could They could be prepared to sell him for 34 million. Wouldn't be against it. Don't think he's a bad player, but I don't really think he moves the needle and he's incredibly frustrating but again if our manager can work a trick and get a tune out of him in that regard fair play um he's been compared to trossard well, uh, you're definitely not Saka, and i don't think you're trossard the only way you're close to trossard is the trossard i saw in the belgium shirt because he stunk up the place if i'm honest with you you know kai havert started well in the euros and then kind of flatted out declarized for me at an underwhelming tournament trossard there was nothing to scream and shout about people so yeah, man, the, the biggest praise I can give some of these Arsenal players, especially Declan Rice, is, but at least you don't do that in an Arsenal shirt. So I'm not too sure, people. But with that, that seems to be everything we have to discuss, people. Let me know your thoughts and everything we've gone over and all the other talking points. Any other emerging news, you know, I'll get videos out for you lot. For now, though, you lot, stay safe, stay blessed. Link up again soon. Peace.